You guys have fun? Yeah. Long day. Long day. Excited about our pick. Go ahead, shoot. Give us the rationale. Why did you pick him? Yeah. focusing on him yeah uh, we we uh we know we do well uh when we have consensus um in in our group and that's uh from scouting coaching r d and and we really had that with ricky he's a guy who throughout the process uh we liked early and it kept getting stronger and um uh does a lot of things well does a lot of the things we covet at that position well and uh we had we, uh, we believe we have a real strong group there, and we wanted to uh, add another player. And, um, you know, Ricky is a very versatile player um, and uh, also has some punt return value that, uh, you know, I think we think will uh, come in handy. So uh, just felt like it was the right guy at the right time and uh, really excited about it. He just plays the position real well. I mean, whether he was outside, inside, um, either receiver, all three of the positions, uh, he can separate down the field. He can separate underneath. Got really good hands, extremely smart, um, very well developed. You can tell he's, uh, I guess I'd call it a gym rat or something because you can just see he's worked on his routes, um, put on a lot of hours because you can see it on tape. And there's really no, nothing he can't do. Um, and he can fit in whatever role based off the other guys. It was a catch he had in college, I think, against Charlotte. I guess it showed his contact courage, I guess, as you like to say. Is that a trait that kind of won you guys over to? Yeah, he's one of the, I mean, just there, there's not one play that you see him turn something down. Yeah. I mean, he's going to go over the middle and do everything he can to catch that ball and not worry about anything else when he's on the sidelines. He's not taking the easy way out. He's He makes guys tackle him. Tackle him. He's not looking for a place to fall. And uh, when he doesn't have the ball, he plays just as hard um, when the ball's not in his hands. Kyle and I, I mean, there's the highlight ones, but then there's just subtle in his day-to-day Game to game play. Kyle and I were watching a play today where he broke a tackle. He gets through and just gets popped. And um, he's equipped to take those hits, almost like he likes the physicality of the game. He enjoys run blocking, our, our kind of style. We have a report today on potential trades for Debo Samuel or Brandon Ayuk. Are those true? Is that still in play? And does this pick end- indicate anything? Yeah. Well, why is always us? But, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't know. Um, you know, I know that uh, we're continuing to have positive talks with BA, and uh, you know, we uh, we are really efforting um, to get something done with him, and we're excited about continuing down that path. And uh, Brandon being a part of this team, Debo is a part of this team and a big part of this team. So, um, like I said, we feel great about that group, and we feel like we just made it better with another really good addition to it who complements uh, the group real well. Trade? Never close the door on a trade. I mean, we, um, you know, we'll, we'll always listen, and 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 we have, and uh, but uh, we like our group as it stands. Well, is it at least logical to think that it would have taken something in the first round for you guys to consider trading Brandon, and, and now that the first round is over, that's unlikely that you would move him. Um, yeah, I thought it was unlikely going into it, but that doesn't mean that it can't happen. Um, so, I mean, you listen to everything. Everything's about trying to improve our team as much as we can for 2024 without um, with jeopardizing 25 as much as possible. So that's everything you look into. And um, whenever that opportunity comes, whichever way, if you can improve your team, you do that. It's, sometimes it's hard to picture proving your team, though, um, without them. John, the, um, the late the run on receivers getting big money, A.J. Brown, yeah. um, Amon, um, from the – um, Detroit, um, is that concerning when it comes to bringing in IUK, or was that something you just expected from the market? Yeah, yeah I, you expected that the market would take a, a, a bit of a leap this year. I think it, it surely has, and and um, you know I think it tells you it's a premium position in our league right now. Um, the ball's being thrown a lot, and we're asking these players to do a lot. So um, it's the reality, and and um, you know you deal with that. Yeah, we had a high grade on Ricky and, uh, you know, we're uh, for all the reasons we've told you, um, we're really excited to have Ricky part of our team. Kyle, the word comp thrown out pretty much uh, on draft scenarios. Can you give us a comp on, on Ricky Pearsall? Who does he remind you of? That's tough. Um. 
God, I don't know if I want to do that. Man. How long <laughs> reminds me of myself, just a lot faster, <laughs> a lot better, much better hands, can jump, um, can just do everything much better. That's, I don't want to be held to that forever. I'll let him <laughs> do that. I see him as both. I mean, he's got the 40 to still get on top of people on the outside, which where that starts a little bit. I mean, you just got to have a threat of that to scare guys on a go route. And if you can do that, you can um, separate on the other routes. But um, he can get out of his break very well. Uh, he's not huge, but he's still a, a, got a good body to where he can handle it on any, on any side or at any length of a corner. So, I mean, all of our receivers who play outside, they also play inside. So um, we kind of want a guy who can do it all. Yeah, part of the process, um, I'm sorry, Matt. Um, part of the process, you know, when we go through, we ask our guys, coaches, scouts, to build these highlight tapes. And, um, you know, we, we usually ask the coaches, you know, give us their best stuff and, and then show some play, plays that have some, some of their perceived weaknesses. Um, the one really impressive thing with Ricky, his, his highlight tape just kept going and going and going. And you saw it when you watch games. But Kyle and I were sitting there, and you know we're like 85 plays deep, and consistently really, really solid plays, and and some wow plays as well. So, I think he's a he's an extremely consistent player who makes a lot of plays at you know at a high rate, um, and does so week in week out. So that that that's exciting to add a player of that uh, quality to our to our group. Go ahead, Matt. So, did. Did Brandon have any? Ricky did not come in on it. No, no. Brandon at, yeah. um, at uh, Arizona State. I mean, yeah. Did you guys get his feedback? At Brandon all? just texted. We got, on the, we got on the way in. Yeah. Fire pick. Fire pick. <laughs> no <laughs> lie. Can't lie. <laughs> so Herm, I talked to Herm though a lot. Herm, I, Herm, uh, you know, Herm and I are close, and you know, I remember when he was a true freshman at A State. He started telling me about this kid and how excited he was about him, and spent his time there, and then moved over to Florida, and uh, you know, even upped his game against um, you know as good a competition as you'll find in college football. Uh, you, know, you always value what receivers do when the ball isn't in their hands. What stood out about when he didn't have the ball in his hands? That he makes guys tackle him. Um, you know, you watch so many guys who just they get what's there and they go down. And some sometimes people are cool with that and stuff, and some but sometimes a guy just doesn't like that. And you kind of want to not have to ask guys to fight for every yard. You like to, um, you'd rather have to pull them back. And when you watch a guy who just fights for everything he can do and makes people people tackle him, regardless of your make miss ability, just with your hands and how good they are, so you can transition and get upfield um, with fearlessness, you can be good after the catch. But then you watch some of his cutting ability, which makes him a punt return um, option and things like that. And knowing that he does have the ability to make some guys miss and create edges with his hands, with the kind of his mindset of being fearless, um, you feel he's going to be good after the catch. And we got some pretty good guys to be in that group in that way. Sorry. Uh, if teams didn't know you were open for business at receiver, they definitely do now. Are you going to get calls through the night? Do you plan on this going through to when teams are on the clock tomorrow? Is this kind of a the reality now I, for you guys? I can't predict uh, for, you know what we're going to get. I'm going to go home, go to bed, wake up, come in here tomorrow, and uh, fire it up and uh, try to add some more really quality players to our team. Um, this is always an exciting process and uh, looking forward to it. Do you think you were close on any trades at all to move no. up or down? No. Yeah. Correctly, two years ago when you got through the first round with Debo, you said nothing came close. I think you said we're not going to trade him. Something. Is this a little different with Brandon? That it's still kind of on the table? Um, I, mean, I, I mean, I'm getting mature, I think, as I get older. It's, everything's always on the table. I think that's a better answer for me. Um, I mean, it doesn't, no, it doesn't seem that likely. To, I mean, to be honest, but like, I mean, I'm still on the table. If, if someone offers Jed and John some good stuff for me, I'm going to be out of here, I'm sure. So it's, no. Yeah, I'm quick to go. Effect of knowing you have these two receivers or could be very, you know, two, if you sign Brandon, it could be very expensive. If you, Oh, all that comes, all that, yeah, all that comes into play. But I think, I think, I think the hardest thing when guys look at needs and stuff and rosters, especially when it's a position that's not quarterback, um, where lots of guys play and you have different personnel packages, like needs aren't always 
so obvious just that year. They can become a lot bigger in a second year. They can be bigger in the first year. You never know how someone's going to play out. So that knee can be extremely important right now or come training camp. Um, but you also know we have to get some draft picks in here of some younger guys um, that are for sure going to contribute just as these years go and especially with Brock and things like that. And so all that plays into it. That's why it's not like you go in and say, hey, we need one now because of A, B, and C. There's like four positions we were really interested in being the right pick at 31. And if all of the, we have arguments for every single one and it changes each day because they all are, they all do make sense. And then when it gets to there, you got to take the one that makes the most sense. And that's just not as simple as what's totally obvious right now. It's kind of over a three-year window, over a four-year window. And when it comes to a first-round pick and a fifth-year option, it becomes over a five-year window. And what that can do for a roster from a salary cap standpoint, from personnel to how you package these guys, two wideouts, one wideout, three, some go four on the field at once. And, and then especially you take it as a punt returner who we lost. There's just a lot of factors that go in that aren't just as obvious as it is when you just look at a, fear, uh, a need for that day. Close the door and trade for IU. Is, this, is that the same for Devo? What? We didn't close the door. Like I said, we don't close the door on anything. I think that's what I said. Did you change my words? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> probably. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kyle Brock and, and Ricky played high school pretty close by. Is there a familiarity there? Any relationship? Any knowledge of one another? I'm not sure. We didn't ask him. We didn't. We want to tip our hand. <laughs> I brock my toe on you guys, so <laughs> no, we didn't ask him. Texted you or did he text Kyle with a flyer? Uh, I think it was John. Yeah, he texted me on the way in here. Yeah. Is that nice to get? Yeah, I, I mean, BA, we have a tremendous relationship, nice. and it's a group text. It's group text, <laughs> both of us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, I think it's just how people younger than you talk. <laughs> Fire yeah. pick. Fire pick. No Can't lie. lie. <laughs> Next one's from Herm. That's a great pick. He won't let you down. So you want to keep going with X? <laughs> Words. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. No punishment. <laughs>